All right, so today I'm going to show you how to roll a die, roll dice in general, and have the value determined with, the, with your script. So that's a five, and then five is going to be printed out here. And my die will reset, and I can roll it again. But the important part is reading the dice. That's the problem I'm trying to solve today. And if you want to do like a Monopoly game or something, this is something you're going to need to tackle. So I'll get a fresh world, and you can follow along. All right, so I have my fresh world. I'm going to go to home, and then I'm going to add a part. I'm just adding a block. I'm going to make it a die, D-I-E. Whoops, my caps lock is on. Hold on a second. D-I-E. And I'm going to change the size. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to make it 4 by 4 by 4. I'm going to anchor it. So I'm going to roll up here, hit the anchored button. And I'm going to change the position. I'm going to make it 0. 30, y, 30 on the Y and 0 on the Z. And just hit F to frame in because we lost it. Now it's hanging hanging in the air in the center of the world. And let's make a floor since we're here. There we got a floor. I'm going to call this floor. You can call it board maybe if you want. And position, I'm going to make that 0, 2.5 and 0. I'm going to anchor this also. And let's go to size. Make that 100 by 1 by 100. There we go. So that's sitting right on the terrain. All right, nice. Now let's make this look like a die. Okay, so go to uh, Toolbox and go to Images and search for Dice Face. There we go. And now find something that you like. And you're going to see, you're going you're gonna to take some time to try and get these to match up. But I'm going to put my three right there. And I'm going to open this up and it says decal, change that, change that to three, right? Because you're going to have six of them, so you're going to get confused. And I'm going to pause the video and dig around and find five more matching. Don't worry about what side you're going to put it on. I'm going to, I'm going to go through that with you. All right, so now I have my, my decals on there for my dice. But you're going to have to follow along on this or your readouts are going to be funny if you if you follow everything but this so let's start with um do i have a one let's let's not start with one though because i want to start with two because that's going to be the front of my die all right so if i go here and it's not on the front right now click on your decal go to face and put this on the front all right now on the other side of a two on a die if you look at it is going to be the five so we go to the five, and now we're going to put that on the back. There we go. There's back. And now on the top, let's do a six. So we hit our six decal, go to face, and we're going to make that top. So the opposite side of the six on a die is a one. So click your one, go to face, and then that's going to be bottom. That was already on the bottom. That's cool. Now, the right and the left vary among dices. They're not really a chirality associated that's standard. So let's go to three and make that right. All right. So go to the face and make that right. Now, let's go to the four and make that left. Go to the face and make that left. There we go. Now we have a standard die. And if you're following along, the code will work out without any modification, hopefully. All right, so now let's go to our die, uh, the part, and let's add a script, and we're gonna call that roll. There we go, here, roll. And it's tiny text, let's make it bigger. There we go, hopefully you can see that okay. And I wanna get a variable for my die, script.parent, and then I wanna get a random number generator so that I can put rotational force on my dice when I go to throw it, right? Then physics are going to, is going to take over everything else. So random.new, I'm going to use this tick because that gives you a seed value so that every time you start your game, you're going to get a new random number sequence. All right, so we'll do local function roll die, right, with no arguments. First thing we need to do is unanchor the die, right? So we'll say uh, anchored equals false. Now I can start falling. 
But before it starts falling, it's going to be almost instant. We're going to make a variable called x. We're going to make a random next integer negative 30 to 30. So it's going to pick a, a random integer between these two values. And that's going to be our, for our rotational force when we go to throw it. All right, so I'm going to just copy that twice. I'm going to make this a y. And I'm going to make this a z. Cool. So now that the dice is unanchored, anchored, we got some random numbers. Let's go ahead and add some rot velocity. So for rotational velocity, it's a vector 3, new, and then x, y, and z. All right. Now I'll make it bounce around a little bit when it hits, too. It spins it. So let's wait three seconds so that it can settle down. Here's where we're going to read the die. Read the face that's up. I'm not ready for that right now. Then we're going to print the result. I also made that a comment because I don't have a result yet. <clears throat> All right, then we'll wait so that the player can see the, see the result. Or maybe you might want to bring a UI up. Then we're going to re-anchor our die. And then we're going to reposition it back to where it belongs. Position equals vector 3, new. And I put it in 0, 30, and 0. Cool. So let's test it. So let's just do a wait five seconds so that when we get in the game, we can see it. And then we'll roll die. All right, so that's easy enough. Let's see. Make sure we don't have any errors. Look at my view window, output, and oops. There we go. And it rolled. I jumped on it. Let's put a spawn pad out. So let's go over here and go to model. Put a spawn. Oops, did I get it? Spawn. There we go. Cool. All right, let's try again. So we go ahead and spawn. Take a look at our die. Yeah, there we go. Good. And you saw that spin when it started, when it started falling. Now we got to check to see, um, and it went back. We got to check to see what the readout is. That's actually the tricky part. That's the meat of the video. So um, what we want to do is I wrote, I did a video on whether a player was looking at you or not. So I think I'm going to use that. I'm also going to make another function. So I'm going to make two functions. I'm going to check to see if it's the side I want, right? So we're going to say facing. That's going to be which direction we think is facing up. I'm going to do this point to point vector. And I'll show you what that is in a minute. What we need, let's go to our terrain. Um, above this dice, up in the air, I'm going to put a part, and that's going to be my up part. And then I'm going to make a vector between the up part and the die on the ground. And then I'm going to check the angular difference between the side I think I'm looking, the side that's up, and that vector to see if it's less than 45 degrees. If it is, then I'm going to know what side is up. And you're probably like, oh my God. But that's okay. You can just follow along. Oh, my part's way out there. That's fine. I call this up vec. And we'll go here to position zero. I'm going to make it 100 and zero. We don't need it that high. Maybe 80. 80. Oh my God. 80 and zero. There we go. It's up there. Cool. And it's above my die. Now the die is going to fall and bounce around, but it's going to be still be a less than a 45 degree. If it's not, you're going to need to put like walls or something so it doesn't bounce around too far away. But this, this will work. Make sure that it is anchored. And let's go back to our script, our roll script. So let's get a reference to our up part. So they probably should all be in one model, but that's all right. I'm not going to do that today. Up part, workspace, up. Oh, not up. Did I call it up vec? Let's call it up part. Up part. Up part. I am going to make a vector with it. That's that P2P vector. This is the dice to the up part vector. All right. And what, what I said we would do is we're going to find the angle using a math.arc cosine facing is going to be 
the vector from the C frame on the dice, and we're going to make a dot product with the P2P vector. But I'm not really good at radians, so I'm going to convert them to degrees. So I'll say angle times 180 over math.pi. So if you remember your trigonometry, say do uh, if degree is less than 45 degrees. Right? Then we'll return true. All right, but how are we going to use this? Well, I'm going to make a function called is looking. And is looking is going to have object one, which is my dice, and object two, which is the up part. All right, and then I'm going to say local P2P. I'm going to create my P2P vector with the difference between object one, object two's position and object one's position. And then I'm going to say, make it a unit vector, which means it's of length one. So it just basically gets the direction of, of that line in between those two parts. All right, now check for two. I'm starting with two because we put two on the front and that's the most obvious way to check. So I'll say local found equals is side I'm going to call this function right here. I'm going to pass in the vector that um, is off of the C frame of the dice. So I'll say object one C frame look vector. So this is actually the where, where the part is looking. So if two is looking up, we're going to get this true. So if it's less than 45 degrees of the vector between your dice and the up part, then we're going to get a true. All right, we'll say if found, then return two. So we got a two. Let's just go ahead and duplicate this. We're going to do this for six now, All right? Because six is in the opposite. Uh, yeah, not six, five. Five is on the opposite side of two. So if this is the look vector, the negative look vector is going to give me a five. There we go. And copy. And this is where I always mess up. I always miss something here, like a, a minus sign or whatever. I think I'll do three and four now. So three, get rid of that minus sign. This is going to be the right vector, which is uh, a, pro uh, a property of the C-frame, and that will be a 3. Then I'll do this again, copy, and then I'll check for 4. So 4, oops, there we go. 4 is on the opposite side of 3, so that's going to be a negative right vector. And there's probably a more elegant way of doing this, but I thought this would be the easiest for a video. And then we're going to do our six and our one, right? So six is top, right? So top has an up vector on the C frame. That's where I got that up vector from before. Oh, look what I, I almost forgot. So you're going to get, if you get a nil, it means you messed up one of these, right? And then let's check for our one. So our one is on the opposite side of six. One, so we're going to put a negative in here. And we'll put a one here. All right, sweet. So we need to call is looking with the dice and the up part. Go down here and right here, we're going to say local result equals is looking die and up part. And we'll just print it out. There we go. Oh, and we need our view. There we go. Let's see what it is. It's a five. Oh, look at that. Five. Awesome. All right, let's do a little button now so we can make it so we can make it do that. All right, so for our button, I'm gonna need a remote event. Go to replicated storage, remote event. Let's say a roll event. Ooh, roll RE. I usually use RE for remote event. 
we're going to go to our starter GUI, screen GUI, text button. I'll put it down here. And I don't want to put too much time in the button itself. Button name, let's call that roll button. And let's change our text to roll. We'll go ahead and scale the text so I won't decorate it too much. All right, so there, let's put a local script. And in the local script, let's call this roll loc. We're just going just gonna to send a message telling us when to roll on the server side. So I'll say local rs game get service replicated storage. We need to get our remote event. So I'll call this roll re. It's in replicated storage. We'll wait for child. Roll re. This name must match that name. All right. So once we did that, we'll just do a function, local function. Oh, you know what? We have to capture our button too. Let's do on click. On click local button equals script dot parent and then all we'll do all we'll do here is do a roll re and fire server that should work and then just attach your activated event to your on click oh did it again on click on the other side, on your roll, go over here. Oh, this will make it easier. Copy these two lines of code because what you have on the server side, on the client side, you need on the server side. Go to roll, copy those two lines of code anywhere up here in the declarations. Now this, I'm gonna to need to capture this. I'll do this on the bottom. I like to capture my events on the bottom. I'm gonna get rid of that weight and Get rid of that role. I'll say role re, and then I'll do on server event connect role die. Get rid of the two extra parentheses. Voila, this should work. Let's go here, play. And there's our die. We're going to roll it. Look at that, a six, and I'll pop back up. Roll it again, a two, looking good. And just to make sure that it's still working, a one, awesome. All right, so I will build on this. I wanna make my my own, uh, like a, make a Monopoly game clone or something for you guys. So I'll do a little series with this. I think it's kind of fun.